Go on. Go on, Vickers. Go on, Vickers. Go on, Vickers. That's his second point. He's off. Go on, Vickers.
Um, Calder, first shot of the game, and John Cullen will get his legs in the way of that one. So Pyatt rotates around for the Coventry plays. As here we have our first lot of action for the night. As John Craighead will square up against Pyatt. Hey, first time that they see Craighead go down here. As Pyatt will remove his helmet. He's a two heavyweights going at it. Craighead will get the better of this one, I think. Things are teeing up. First bit of action we've seen as Pyatt will throw his case across and the Devils have seen a lot of that. Well, what a way to start it, Eddie. Obviously the Devils got to come on and play physical. Craig Ed and Pyatt, no better way I think to kick things off than to let the Coventry players know that the Devils are here for business. Well, it's livening up as Andre Pyatt's back out of the box and he throws it around. That's Craig Ed and Pyatt. We'll go at it again here. Well, these are two big boys. The second dance of the evening. Only 10 minutes into this game. Craig Ed, one strong character. Well, not much in that one. As Clyde will try to claim his first victory of the night. He makes his way to the box. Well, interesting here to have a look down at the referee as Craig and Enpine have walked over the box, but not sure what the call is here. And take. And Davison. That's a big crunching blow here as things definitely heat up. So Carlson comes back down. As it's all kicking off now, right down below us, as Davison. As Calder and Davison kicked it off to start with. As Rob Davison. Burke Carter, but we to see the calls here. It definitely has heated up here at the uh, Wales National Ice Rink. Joel Davison makes his way to the box for Carter. Color in the box for Coventry. As the referees. 
will decide what's going on as players. As Carlson tries, has his word as Tate awaits with Dave Matsos for the calls here as both officials line up. But what I cannot give him is the non-call on John Cullen being hooked down on a five on three. Well, as Bielak goes over to Romanuk, DeWall will jump in on him as Romanuk rocked Martin in the corner. As uh, Beckner ties a few guys up, Martin circles around. But Romanuk with a big hit on Martin. And he's still on the ice. Well, we've had plenty of physical stuff here this evening. It's been a hard fought challenge. And Bielek goes back to try to have a go at, at Romanuk. Well, it's all kicking off, Eddie. I didn't see the first hit on uh, on Martin. Did you you get a view on that first hit? I don't care if it was dirty or not. Russ Romanuk did his job. That's what exactly, if we have any chance, we need to get them down to 3D, knock out one of their best players, and get them off their game. That, uh, that oh, was a great Alex play. Miles, and he goes the ice. So Romanek goes to the box. He's got a cut over his left eye. So Nigel. So it's times like this. I'll tell you, Martin's still on the ice. He's injured. Hopefully he's okay as he makes his way to his feet. Looks like he's getting assisted off. Not sure where the injury came with him, but obviously Romanuk hit him in the corner, but unfortunately didn't get a view of that, which kicked it off, which got Bielak, which got Bielak upset as it's all rolling here. Three minutes and 40 to go. So Bielak's made his way to the... Bielak has made his way across and down into the dressing room. Martin will make his way off. As it kicks off here. As Rempel's got nothing left to hang on to. It's Schuler got stripped of everything. Always tough fighting someone when they got nothing on, Eddie. Nothing left to hang on to here. Rip will come across to help Jeff Burgoyne. I'm not sure if the goal was, was in on that or not. Ah, Schuler will go all the way down. I think that was Schlender that went all the way out. Sorry, Schuler still on the ice. So it was Schlender that went in for Coventry. He fought Rempel. There's quite a bit all over the place here tonight.
Newcastle Arena for the Vipers' home game against Coventry, a friendly which at times seemed anything but. Wilson, though, says while winning is the goal, fighting does have a role in the sport, as well as being a crowd pleaser. The whole game of hockey is, is a physical game. And it's just been allowed from day one that uh, you know you're allowed to fight, and it's part of the game. And but it's like it just you just don't go out and just decide oh we're just going to fight. You know there's there's reasons for it, and and uh, as coaches you have to know when it's right for your team to, to fight as well. You know it's uh, there might be something happen during the game, and it might be a very close game with a couple minutes to go. You can't afford getting a penalty, and uh, you have to be intelligent about these things. The Viper.
Sabatini. And the penalty called, but it's Goff. Goff this time and Balak now. Bilak is, uh, is another man who's not going to use his fists. He looks like he's using the shirt of Goff there to try and gain a bit of an advantage. And for those of you, and the boos from the crowd, as he tries to rip off Brad Goff's Cardiff shirt, and uh, Bilak looking for any advantage, Goff punching in the dark. And Bilak definitely getting the upper hand. Well, listen to those boos. Trouble pronouncing the Jester for Coventry Blaze. Hello, here we go. The Jester and Derby. Well, I've got to say, this is unfinished business because these guys had a couple of fights back in the States last year, and it looks like it's, it's a new place to play hockey, but it's the same old routine. No punches not of any significance being thrown as yet. A few words being exchanged between Derby and Kajaka. I don't think they want the linesmen to actually stop the action, but seeing as there is no action at all, it looks like uh, Kajaka and Derby will spend a little time in the bin. It's a tough look. for the Giants, first time tonight, I believe. Well, it's Walton and, well, another little ding-dong down there in the corner. So, Mihalik and Graham Walton. Walton has scored his first goal for Belfast last week. Having a little bit of a go. It's his first time on the ice and he's... Uh, <laughs> sees combat, as it were. Well, he's pulled his head off. Hat, not his head, but his hat, helmet. One, he's got him in the face now. Oh, the bundle to the floor. Well, who knows? It's been a bit like that tonight, Paul. Yeah, it's been one of those nights where, where there's been a few fights. Uh, young Walter did pretty good there against an import. Uh, Mihailik uh, seemed to get...
into Wild Squared up there. I think the crowd wanted it. Bilak wanted it. And there they go. DeWall and Bilak. A few fisticuffs. I don't think DeWall's too interested. He's more interested in the verbals, I think. Bilak wanted a bit of physical stuff. Both will have a go at him. No, I don't think he minds. There we go. That's the fight the fans wanted. This is what's been brewing. For nearly two periods, Voth and Bilak takes off Bilak's helmet. Can they get any punches away, though? Oh, the gloves coming off from Voth. He's getting a few punches in. They're firing against that plexi. The helmet's in the face. Tables are turned a bit. Bilak standing up to the big man. Voth using his height. Get the punches going in. Really hard punches, were they? I, yeah. You'd want your money back if you paid for this fight, wouldn't you? Seriously. But Voth protecting his teammate. That's what he's there for. Didn't look too bothered about it in the end. And again. You just never know what's going to happen next. Walsh working hard in the corner there. Penalty against Regan Darby now, as he was hacking away at the man. There is Darby. Uh, there he is. Uh, there we are. Like I said, the entertainment value continuing. Darby's quite willing to fight anybody, including the linesman if necessary. Manny's out there as well. Calder and Francis holding each other. But well, Regan Darby was a man possessed there. Regan Darby is, uh, is the one who owns those two legs buried under the two officials. Well, Russ Cowley wondered what had hit him there. I think he knows now soon enough. And I think that could be the end of the night for Regan Darby. Regan Darby wants a bit more. I think that's called going out with a bang.
stretcher please, a stretcher please, thank you.
Madur and Schmidt are all set to go. Ryan Schmidt needs to get something going. NHL tough guy against Nottingham tough guy. Ryan Schmidt, centre ice. Madur throws the first punch. Ryan Schmidt gets hold of him. Well, he hasn't hit him anywhere yet. Well, as the country fans chant Schmier's easy, it's Ryan Schmier throwing the punches, stripping the shirt off, and I hope he gets the extra two minutes for not wearing the tie down. And now Ryan Schmier is looking to finish the job, and then he says, well, I can't do anything now. Well, that's Ryan Schmier's by a mile. Schmier... Schmeer won in, in my in my esteem, hands down. What do you think, David? That's two big slingers going at it there, and the slingers should break out here into neutral ice. Run back by the blaze, and it's dumped in deep. Steelers under a lot of pressure. That was a big hit behind the play, and here we go. Well, it looks like we're going to get a bit of action. It's Stewart in there against Joey Talbot, and these two are going here. That fellow in front would just sit down so we could get a decent view of this scrap. Two middleweights really at it here at the House of Steel, crumpling to a heap. And you'd say probably Danny Stewart's the guy that's a bit more experienced in terms of the drop in the mitts and having the scrap. Joey Talbot, more of a goal scorer. But right off the bat, didn't like the hit on Ian Manzano. And the Sheffield Steelers, number 36, said, right, I'll take this one into my own hands. It's right in the opening seconds of this one. And Steve Munn, we hit the halfway mark of this game. Plays lead 2-1 as Munn forces forward. And now Soderstrom will come in and a left hand from Munn. And here we go, folks. Munn is trying to just punch anything. He's got Soderstrom. And Soderstrom with a left. Now Munn just finishes on Soderstrom. Soderstrom hit with a left. Munn was having none of it. And I think that all started. Steve well, Munn got the puck Munn. into Koenig. Yeah, Koenig covered up the Munn. Munn doing what, uh, what I would expect a, a, a good four-checking forward to do right now, which is to get underneath Koenig's skin. Because that bucks every goalie when he's got his hand on, it, on, on the puck and you come and you take that little bit of a jab at him. And uh, Munn doing a good job to try and get his team back into this game. Give him a bit of life, give him a little bit of a spark. And then Soderstrom doing a good job defending his goalie and doing exactly what he should. But here you can see, just comes in, gives that little bit of a dig. It bugs Koning, and that's what you want to do. You want to get this goalie off of his rocker a little bit. And then, of course, the, the ensuing uh, melee begins afterwards where you have to protect your goalie. And, and you got to say good marks to Soderstrom to, to, for uh, sticking up for Koning. Sodisham straight in, and the little sweep gave as good as he got in the early part. Lead on the power play here at Ice Sheffield. Here we go, scrap right off the bat. Jeremy Cornish against the young Brit. Andrew Sharp and Cornish with lefts. Trying to rip the helmet off here. The linesman will jump in. A oh, bravery from the young kid. Go right off the bat. Jeremy Gornish. Come enjoyed that challenge. A fight can't change the momentum of the game. Do you see Carl Lewis there in the Carl Lewis in the corner? Here comes McIver. It's an even fight, six of one, half a dozen of the other. But McIver is sending a message to the Coventry Blaze that the Cardiff Devils at 3-0 down just won't accept that. The incident that you're seeing now is going to lead to quite a lengthy, a tight game without the British players, of course. Paul Thompson away, so was Rob Wilson, so both teams coachless. But, of course, that meant the players could get to grips early doors, and it was a battle of the youngsters, Dean Holland and Joe Henry. Neither of them ranked 1-2 coming into this season. And here we go, folks. It's Bergen and Carlisle Lewis right off the bat. It's not Nadir that fights Lewis first. We'll wait and see, they get a grip. The linesman will let them go. Bergen throws a right, but then Lewis hits with two rights and connects with two rights as well. Bergen over the top. Lewis with a right over the top. Lewis grabs. Will he go with the uppercut? No. 
Bergen comes back with a big right of his own and another big right before Lewis lands. They get back up again. They want to go. Linesman, get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, should have let him go. Get it out of the way. I know that's what a linesman's supposed to do, but the linesman should have just let it go and get that whole thing out of the way. Hey, once, well, you know what? You can't blame the linesman. Once they make a commitment to break up the fight, they have to do it. But you know what? Good toe to toe scrap. Started down low off that face off, and uh, two big guys going at it. I thought Kevin Bergen did a good job on Lewis. But you know what? Kevin Bergen's a, he's a tough guy. And, uh, you know, you, he goes good toe to toe with Lewis. Lewis had a couple, but do you know what? Bergen goes down here, and that, that's a man. Guy pops right back up on his skates and lays some back in on Lewis. He hits a good ride there. Lewis, I thought, had the better of the opening sequence. And no, 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 you can see Bergen saying. Yeah, Ber you know, but like I say, you Richardson in the face of circle, Tommy Watkins, Matthew Mars gets it, turns on a six, and had defection. Here we go, and now we've got Richardson and Danny Stewart. I think this will be a better scrap. Two not, not heavyweights, but they're superior scrappers. And Richardson leads. Stewart hits back. Stewart with a right. Richardson lands one. Richardson with an uppercut. Oh, and Richardson catches Stewart. Stewart back up. Richardson knocks Stewart down. Two good little middleweights going at it. And Stewart and Richardson, who were behind the warm-up escapade, and Richardson's landed a couple on Danny Stewart there. I thought Stewart hit with the first one, but Richardson landed with a couple of straight rights. You know what? Forget the season of goodwill, eh? But Dave, you know, Richardson, he's so tough, and, and, and so is Stewart, but Stewart took three or four in the chin there, you could see, and... Uh, but he'll be back. It's interesting.
of course, we saw Knight take on the Big Mac last week. But it's uh, Derek Campbell who's going to one punch. How about that? Get the man and add it in. Derek Campbell over Knight. A little bit of fisticuffs now. We saw Knight beat McMorrow. Then we saw Knight fight Campbell last week. And Campbell pretty much one punch Knight. This one is going to last a little bit longer. Knight in the dark uniform. Campbell in the white top. Campbell throwing the lefts. And another left. Knight throws a couple of big rights back, and then we all fall over. Knight lands on top, but I think a pretty even fight. gives the Blaze a 3-2 lead, but watch the trailing play, keep your eyes on the right of the screen, a cross check from Campbell onto Brad Voth, and then a melee breaks out. Now, get your teas and coffees, folks, because this one's going on for quite a while. Everybody grabs a partner, but at the bottom of all this is big Brad Voth, and on top of him is Derek Campbell. Vatha wasn't best pleased, as you can imagine. Campbell was only too willing to uh, accept the invitation. Look at the size difference. Look at the weight difference. Look at the height and reach difference. Every one of us right now would fancy Vatha, wouldn't we, for this fight. But Derek Campbell is as tough, as gritty, as nasty as they come. And the quietly spoken guy from Coventry throws a big left. And Vatha's probably getting the upper hand at this point. Big uppercut. Campbell's digging in and throws that big right and just trying to get an uppercut going. Vatha obviously with a big size and strength advantage there. But a great scrap, a great fight, two tough men. And we're back in the hot. <laughs>
Fox made himself available. Finity in a battle with Soderstrom along the boards. 25 seconds remain on the first penalty. Then, of course, there's a second one. Richardson can't uh, control the puck. Nobody can control the puck right now, can they? No, it's like a tennis ball out there bouncing all over. Everyone's having trouble making three-foot passes, turnovers all over the ice. Derek Hammer does a great job short-handed. He feeds it back to Soderstrom to Brian Lee. And the first penalty is now expired. We're into the second penalty, just starting. So the first two minutes, Cardiff haven't really done a great deal. Can they in the second? Can Latouli find Hirsch? Rips one. Hirsch got a bit of it. Back door. Lee holds on to his man. A big clash there between Buffett and Robinson. Two on one, short-handed come the blaze. Owens the spare man. Owens got it. Drop pass. Robinson denied. Stevie Lyle. Great stop, Lyle. Nice play as well. Tic-tac-toe by the blaze. Now there's a bit of afters. Robinson wants a bit of off. Voth is having none of it. Robinson's dropped the gloves. Now Voth's dropped them. Voth versus Robinson. It was like Voth had to check. Is it okay to go? Here's the battle. Robinson's trying to get his team going. Linesman, stay out of this one. All big left from Voth to start off with. Another left from Voth. Now grappling on. What do you reckon to this one as the left comes in from Richardson? Ah, just two big strong guys going here. Robinson and Voth both can take a punch, both can throw a punch. Robert tries to throw one, Voth comes in with a right of his own, more of a wrestle, I think the first punch from Voth was probably the best of the encounter. Yeah, uh, Robinson thought he was going to grab on with the left and he just gave the quick jab right in the chops and then Robinson threw one and Voth threw another one. Good fight by two big guys. And the linesmen did good jobs there and not getting involved. Yeah, they know two big guys, let them fight. They're eventually going to get tired, they're going to fall down, they fell down, break them up. He might not be the captain, he's still the Lord Mayor of Cardiff. And uh, he was prepared to stand up to uh, Crookshank, uh, to uh, Robinson there. Five minute penalties apiece for fighting. An easy call. An easy call. Maybe this is what we need to get this game livened up. Uh, both teams kind of not very intense right now. And, you know, Cardiff, uh, you know, they want to, they want to, you know, move up the standings. Or Here's that chance earlier yeah, as well, a, Robinson. A great save. Right there, there's a little slash, a little punch. Here we go. Watch this. And it's his first left jab, isn't it? Yeah, hey. all right there. That's a good jab. Robinson thought he was going to grab on with that uh, left hand, but he fooled him and a little quick one right to the chops. Two tough men, folks. There is big JR, Jason Robinson. Five minute penalty for fighting, but he was trying to get his team going, I think, Robinson. Robinson, we're just hearing, Rick, has got a two and ten as well for instigation. He's got the 2, 10, and 5, 17 minutes now. Well, Voth, Voth did a great job of, uh, you know, they both looked at each other and they, they nodded, we're going to go. He dropped the gloves and then Voth backed up and there's poor Robinson standing there with no gloves on and then, you know, that's not that's not 2 and 10. They were both willing. Voth didn't have to fight him. Fans make their way out. The Cardi fans who have got a long drive home. About 30 or 40 of them have made the trip here. And here we go now. Crookshank is after anybody. And Crookshank has come. And Crookshank wants to fight the world. Now he's just fighting. Is it the captain? It's a four-one brawl here. Three punches going. Crookshank is just everywhere. He wants anybody, everybody. And the two lines are getting. Crookshank joins his second fight. Now Campbell's involved as well. Now Jared Adams. Jared Adams to Paul Thompson. Jared Adams has come right off the bench, goes over to the uh, boards where the separation between the two is. Crackshank, and now we're seeing Campbell one in Latuli. Latuli wants a bit of it. Hicks has stepped in. Campbell definitely wants Latuli. The linesman has got the has got Campbell. And it was Richardson, wasn't he, who actually stepped up to fight Crookshank when all that was kicking off. I tell you right now, the Coventry Blaze, you're in the driving seat to win the championship, and all you're out there tonight, though, is to even the score. You lost the game. Now you're going to have Crook. You're missing two guys. Now Crookshank and Campbell, they should get suspended. They're running around chasing guys, beating them up. You're going to get suspended. Now you're how short are going to be next game? Well... I, I feel here for the linesman and he's making way the Campbell gets escorted to the penalty box and you know what the Coventry Blay and still Campbell is man handled up 
And what's that guy getting involved in? Crazy, crazy. Let's see it again, straight off the bat, and you see Cruikshank just go straight towards the tulip there. And Phil Hill and Cruikshank's just after anybody and everybody. Yeah, he's fighting his old teammate there. Fair play to Richardson. Yeah, Richardson, you know what? He's the captain. He knows he's going to get beat up. He stands in there for his boys. And then he goes after Phil Hill. Top respect to Mark Richardson. And young Simmons is out there as well. And you know, no wonder Jared Adams was so fuming. Yeah, you know something's going to happen. You got Crookshank, Campbell, and Robinson. Uh, you know, and Arena. They have met in the cup since then, a 2 2 tie in the Sky Dome. So the Steelers were unbeaten against the Blaze this season. Early action was about of fisticuffs. Here they want to go, don't they? You can see the words are being said. And Jernick and Colt King, here they're set to go. It is King with the first ones with his right. Jernick comes back then with some rights and left. Then Jernick's jersey goes over his head. So King gets some rights, some uppercuts as well. He would have holding on from both sides and Jernick tries to get going and he does, he probably can't see but gets some rights in but then there's big bombs with the left from King he's certainly getting the upper hand there trying to just really get the punches away is Jernick and certainly Colt King getting the better of the punches Jernick fighting with the best of them in the Elite League proving that he really is a good fighter Colt King at the moment, I would say the heavyweight champion of the Elite League proving very tough indeed it takes some time to get going. This time, Jernick, who seems to fight every week, is going with Keith. Keith gets some rights to start the fight off. Jernick starts to come back. They get a bit tangled on the boards, and Jernick tries to get his hands free. Then they start doing a bit of rocking and to and fro. And then Jernick does get the arm free and starts to go with his right. One or two good ones there. Then back comes some more rights with Keith and Jernick with his rights as well. Jernick starts to go with his left. Keith comes over the top and this one is nearly over. The linesmen step in. Two tough men going. Some naughty punches there from Keith just as his back is turned. Jernick then seems to give him a bit of a slap. Keith then plays up to the Sky Dome crowd. Jernick then wants more words with Keith. That's an entertaining fight and they certainly... of the year, beard of push and shove after this one, players want to have words with each other, all sorts of scrapping going on, players throwing a few punches, and then Phillips takes out Osman, Campbell comes in and gives Phillips a little bit of a beating, that's a bit of a, a one-way show there, Phillips didn't get the chance to show any punches, so Campbell went for a five-minute fighting major, and you got the feeling that the Hall Stingways were still pretty annoyed because this time it's Silverthorne and Phillips gets some punches in this time. In fact, some good rights there from Phillips and Silverthorne getting some in as well, but that was a pretty feisty end to the game and it went in. Dinnerty is with him. McLean. Oh. Somehow that trip isn't called. Blaze fans are unimpressed by that one. Here's Nick Duff. They're going to go. Matic Kral and Ryan Finnerty. Finnerty with a good couple of punches early. 
Crow wanted this one after that check in the back. He fought Silverthorne a couple of weeks ago. He's not much of a fighter. Finity knows how to throw him. Fair play to Crow for hanging in here. He's trying to get an arm free. Finity lands a good punch and another. Crow goes down. Big win for Finity. But fair play to Crow for standing up against the play this player coach for the Steelers after that. Got to be said. Duff shoves Guthrie. It was a hit to the head. It was a definite hit to the head from, Guthrie, uh, from Duff and Guthrie. It's going to be a penalty for Ruffing. And Farmer, here we go. With Duff. Duff's dropped his gloves. Farmer does so as well. Farmer gets in a good early punch. But this is a going to be a good sized tilt. Duff goes in with a jersey jab. Swings one over the top. Farmer ducks away. Farmer comes back with on into the side. Duff trying to tuck Farmer down. Swings one over the top, misses. Connects to the back of the head. Farmer gets ragdolled. Throws one into the face. Good punches from Duff. Farmer gets a couple now. Rob Farmer swinging away. boy, Farms. Duff the tougher. Farmer showing he's willing. Now Duff with some roundhouses. Farmer answering as well. I think Farmer felt one. That was a good fight. Peen has a, a little go as well. That one also doesn't find Peter Hirsch or the back of the net just wide as Ross Venus gets wiped out by Guillaume Lapine. Yernick will go over. They're going to fight. Here we go. Sure enough. Lapine gets a few in. Oh, that's a big uppercut by Lapine and that dropped Yernick. Oh, that one hurt. Let's put the replay on. There's the big hit wiping out Venus and they always knew that they were going to fight after this one. And it's all Lapine. That big uppercut just completely floored. Brian Yernick. So 1-0 Nottingham. Look, two players about to go. Lapine and Jernick. They take off their gloves. Jernick takes a run. And Lapine, though, with the right, he lands some real big bombs with the right. Jernick goes down, gets back up, and the players want to go. But because the players went down, the officials have to step in and stop the fight. And they're doing their best there. Both players still throwing punches. Nottingham annoyed, I think, because then the linesman really did come in and break it up. And this time the referee, Murray Hansen, has to go in as well. That was a big fight. And the Peen with the win. 3-0 Nottingham at 23 minutes and 11 seconds. There is a shocking kneeing incident on Myers by Jernick. So Lapine steps in again and lands some more punches on Jernick. Myers ended up missing the rest of the game. But did return to action on Sunday, as you'll see later. Lapine unhappy. Myers gingerly gets off the ice and Jernick is thrown out of the game so Nottingham at this stage in control and of course the Coventry
very much a fan favourite as Dustin Cameron's hook by Jamie Millam. There's uh, no call though. Fans didn't like that at all, Paul. That could have been a hooking call there. Indeed, Cameron didn't like it either. He uh, gave the linesman a look. Didier Matty battling with Olsen behind the net. Played away now. They're going to battle all night. They're both going to be tired and bu bumped and bumps and bruises all night long for those two guys. And here we here go. go. Didier Matty drops them. Wrestling with Ben Olsen. Linesman already in. Olsen says get away. And now, oh, that's a big uppercut from Olsen. Throws another one. Didier Matty doesn't look like he fancies this one much. Lands a punch now. Olsen's just such a, such a big man. I mean, he's towering over Devin Didier Matty. Landing uppercuts and a, and a few haymakers there, but I'll give Didi Amede some credit there. It's very hard to hold on to a big man like that, and he's taking a little bit of a pounding there from Ben Olsen. He's doing well, Didi Amede. He's standing up. He's taking some big shots here. Throws one now. Olsen lands another one. Didi Amede tries to get his arm free. They're still going. This is a good tilt, these two. Olsen lands one. Didi Amede lands a good one. Crowd is absolutely into this one, Paul. This one looks like it could go for Wild well. Diamati. Looks like he's had enough. Nope, he's still going. Not a person seat, and everyone's on their feet here at the Sky Dome. Jersey Jobs, they're still going. This could be fight of the season already between Olsen and Diamati. He's taking a lot of punches, but landing his own, the Cardiff Devil. And that was a great bout there, Aaron. And there's Devin Diamati again, just getting in the face of everybody. And even as he's the fight is over, the referees have separated. He's still talking to Benny Olsen. <laughs> Benny, <laughs> Benny telling the crowd he appreciates the, uh, the support. <laughs> Meanwhile, Didi Amete gets cross-checked in the back. Here we go. Once again. Olsen gets flattened. Once again, Didi Amete. It's Tyson Marsh with Ben Olsen. They're just wailing away on each other. And Marsh, bit, bit of a uh, tougher opponent for Olsen. They're resting away here. And uh, just exchanging punches. No tactics here, that's just two guys wailing away on each other. Eventually they tie each other up. And uh, Marsh sticking up for Didi Amete there. Now Olsen tries to land a punch or two. Marsh lands one back. Giving a good account of it. Oh, that's a big uppercut from Olsen. But Marsh responds and it's still going down. Now Olsen gets Marsh's shirt over his head. Well, uh, Paul, it's a busy night for Big Ben Olsen, and that started off again. There it is, the heavyweight champion sign, and the crowd here is loving that. Here come the Coventry Blaze on the wing. It's Beleski shoots the second shot of the night for the Coventry Blaze. And that Sticked was very away. close then. The roar, if that had gone in, would have been special on the Panther. That's, Gets that is Beleski. The net, and Stevie Lee wants back Beleski. Here we go. Beleski drops gloves and helmet, throwing right hand. Stevie Lee already holding on, and that's the win, Beleski. Wow. I think we can hear the roar from the Sky Dome from that one. Oh boy, oh boy, Bolesky with a huge hit behind the net. And Stevie Lee, and we were just mentioning him, and he did exactly what we'd expect of Stevie Lee there, a tough little stocky defenseman. He didn't care that he was taking on an NHLer who likes to throw the gloves on the ice and throw the fists. And that was a nice little dustle for Matt Bolesky on his debut. He's had two shots so far and a fight, and the Blaze fans love him. Then you see a tussle, Olsen and Hewitt. Hewitt goes in on Olsen here with a bit of a slash and Olsen bumps into Hewitt. So then we see a fight. Sestito is having none of that. He sticks up for his teammate and the pair of them drop their gloves. And here we go. We've got a fight on our hands. Two big tough men trading blows with their rights. Takes its time to get going. I think Sestito smiling there, but Olsen trying to come over the top. Sestito comes back there. Linesman just watching, Kavanagh and Liptrop just 
enjoying the scenery at the moment. And certainly Alton coming back with some big rights there. And then he gets the takedown as well. So that at that stage, 2-0. Breakaway hitting face-off. We have a fight. Who is it? It's Keith. It's Alton. Three seconds. The clock stops and they go at it. In the white is Keith. In the blue is Alton. Getting their hands free, getting their shoulder pads free and everything. And they're now grappling. Olsen goes with the takedown. Keith goes round on top and the linesmen step in. Both of them waving to the crowd. Bit of pantomime villain going on once more from both players. Momentum swings their way. Now, again, stuff is going on. Sandrock is involved there. You can see him getting quite feisty. Number of Blaze players come around just to try and calm things down. Olsen was there too. More going on behind the net, which sees Hirsch get involved. He was to get a game misconduct for that one. So Hirsch is the next Blaze player. Tries to break his stick on the crossbar. Can't do so. Doesn't get that smashing effect. So he leaves the ice. And we're going to see backup Adam Goss have 40 frames. Now we see another fight, Keith against Olsen. It is there again, round two for them. This one's pretty decent as well, some rights from both of them, uppercuts and undercuts from the two of them. Big long scrap, goes on for a good while. But that was Olsen's third fight, so he's out of the game. So three players lost. First period, honours even, Ben Olsen is... No, he doesn't need to do that. Getting involved and doesn't need that. Pantovic is dealt away. No, 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 no. Fox step is getting away, involved step as well. Away. And now Dustin Cameron drops them. Here we go. Cameron and Jordan Fox over there in the corner. And Jordan Fox is uh, being dealt with by Dustin Cameron. Fox lands a couple now. This is a good belt over here in the corner. Fox had the upper hand in the middle of the fight after Cameron had a good one early on. They're resting away. Cameron's trying to get. Fox's shot over his head, big shot from Fox. Cameron with an uppercut as well. This is a very enjoyable middleweight scrap. Oh, that's a big one and another. Fox lands one back. Let's just say defense isn't really the priority between these two. They were just doesn't actually hurt people. when you hit somebody's helmet, you know. Plot, 3 2, the Coventry Blades win. So now to the handshakes. And this is where things get interesting. You'll see. Just in the far side of your picture, Ben Olsen and Francis. That's where it starts. Well, Devon Didiamiti goes in, and here starts a tussle. The two of them go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, and this is a good old scrap. Two players sticking up for each other. Things were to follow after this, but they are going through the punches. There's some big punches there by Olsen with his right. Paul Thompson, you see in the background, the Coventry coach screaming at the officials, making his point there. And this fight continues. They're looking tired now because it's been a long scrap. Now off goes Didi Amiti, but you see there in the background, Biabra shouting. He comes over and gets involved once more. Francis too, and then Didi Amiti. And you saw match penalties for Francis and also another one for Biabra and Ben Olsen too for an incident with a spectator. But this is what some of the people involved thought about it. Such shenanigans in terms of multiple fights and bans at the end of the game. But there was some sort of fight in action. And you see here players battling. Now what happens is Venus is involved and then Domish gets involved. The man involved for the Cardiff Devils is Devon Didiamiti. Didiamiti got a match penalty for this incident. But on review by the referee Dean Smith and the disciplinary committee, that was downgraded. So Didi Amiti was not banned, but he went to the dressing room and this time he waves to the crowd. Domish for gone. Matthew Myers coming forward here. Bit of rough and tumble in front of the net. Bit of talking going on. And then you see Kelsey Wilson come in. He's not happy with what was going on there. So Egner and Wilson have a fight. This was the best fight of the night, actually. There's three fights tonight to show you. And this one was a decent one to start off with. Some good punches being thrown. Then they started to wrestle for a while. Got their punches going once more. And that one was over. But a terrific fight between the pair. Of Graham there. Goal number 18 of the year for him. 5-0 Nottingham. And then the first of a couple of bouts for 
Guillapine, first with Omsen. This one really was a wrestling match. Neither of them could get their hands free to throw any punches. And Omsen falls on top of the Fiend and the in dreamland. That was the score at the end of two periods. I said there was to be another fight for Guy Lapine. Here he comes face to face with Egana. This time Lapine gets some short ones in underneath on the right side and then falls on top of Egana. So two fights. Day defeat. There's still time though for one more goal in the game, but before that, a fight. Mike Egner of the Coventry Blaze going toe to toe with British youngster Josh Batch. Egner gets the good start, but to Batch's credit, he stands up and stands tall and starts to get some rights of his own. Egner comes back hard, but look, Batch comes back, Egner comes back, Batch comes back once more. A terrific fight by the British youngster and the two of them have a good long battle eventually it turns into a wrestling match but the Cardiff players and the fans will be very proud of their British player so 6-2 for a couple of minutes that's not the end of the rough and tumble because now we see a fight it's Keith once more this time against Coventry's Egner this one didn't last as long but the pair of them will sit with fighting majors <laughs> coming up though against Coventry and that is for the slash on Faulkner and this is Lord to control it he gets hit hard he comes in and there's gonna be trouble and Lord looks like he's in trouble and they're gonna bail out this is Marsh Marsh is in early and he's gonna go and he's up against Harvey Harvey just likes to be involved and Marsh is giving it to him now and they're both throwing hard they're both exchanging Marsh is gonna give it they're both gonna take it and give take and give they're both going it's like Christmas all over as both guys go at it hard and the season of giving was fully in season there as both Tyson Marsh and Kevin Harvey had a good old go. Brothers. This is wonderful fast flowing hockey driven by Jinan Paddy Boyd again. And Adam Henrik goes through. Kevin Vegan, Justin DeCosta has a word. You're a braver man than me, Justin. And now Kevin Regan getting involved, and, and here we go. Sticking Olsen in the face. Olsen's angry. Stewart wants to go. Stewart wants to go. Gloves have gone. Everybody flying. wants to go with Olsen. There's two. Come on, Dun, uh, and Olsen, five. Olsen's going with Danny Stewart over there, that far side. Stewart's taking a lot of punches, but he's holding on. And then eventually, Danny Stewart drops to the ice. Leaves a little bit of a bitter taste in the mouth here. I'm not sure what they're going to call. And it looks, it like looks like Regan is being thrown out of the game. Is he being thrown out of the game? He is. Blair Daly will have to step in. Wow. And he's, Regan is. He's offering. He's offering uh, Zacharias for one. He's now. offering Zacharias. Zacharias says, "On you go, son."
Yeah, I thought Kevin was really brave. I mean, he got in there for his teammate, and, and he fought a guy who's got a bit of a reputation, Harvey, who's had a lot, you know, many more fights than him. And I thought he did pretty well for most of the fight. He got caught with a couple of lefts there at the end, but that's, you know, a bit of inexperience. And, and, um, but I thought he did really well. well this is Matt Selby, and Matt Selby and Chamberlain. Selby lands a good first punch. Selby. And they're wrestling. Struggling to get that arm free. He gets it free, gets another one in. That's three. Chamberlain oh, not really putting anything back. He's got one good punch in, but Selby's probably land about, oh, about just, 10 to 1. You can't just wait, son. Chuck some in there. Let's see it go in. Selby, I think having the better. Oh, here we and go. here we go. First fight of the season. Kevin Harvey versus Brad Plumpton. I guess this is how they set the scene. Let's see how it goes. Two new guys to lead. And Harvey's right just going right. in there. Plumpton gets them back. Harvey pistoning his right hand. Plumpton throws some back. This it's is a pretty good even at the moment. There's a lot of rights going in from both sides. This is just two players swinging away at each yeah. other. Well, welcome to the Elite League, Kevin Harvey. Yes. I like him already. And also Brad Plumpton as well. Yes, indeed. Played by Bob Wren, who's flattened behind the net as well. We can have a call here. And, oh, hey, hey. Oh, and in goes Chris, Chris Murray's Murray. come over. And uh, Ryan Janan steps in as well. We'll see if we can catch the hit. There you go. You just see Bob Ring. Well, Chris Murray's got to go there. for this cross check as well here. Look at that. That's oh, awful. That's vicious from Murray. He goes steaming him from behind there. Who's... The hit was a bit questionable originally. Oh, oh here we go. There's been an offer of a fight. And that's, that's Kevin Harvey. Janan's getting involved. Janan needs to keep the gloves on and avoid a penalty. That's 100%. Here we're gonna go. Well. Here we're gonna go. Oh, we're pushing and shoving. Devin. And Devin's trying to get in that. Devin's got his gloves off. There's helmets dropping. Somebody's lost a helmet as well. Harvey being ushered away. Is that Bob Wren? Who's the? Yep. And there's Bob Wren in there. His helmet off. Chris Murray in there as well, of course. Dinand is uh, talking, oh. and he gets a bit of a shove. They're still going. Oh, That's Murray. Jonathan Boxel in there. He's been itching for a bit of the rough stuff. I'm going to see what the penalty is going to be. Are we going to actually just let him the go here? Free. The refs need to just let him go here, Paul. They do. Murray's trying to go here with Janan. With Devin. Devin as well. Devin's trying to Devin's ready. Away. Devin's ready. Oh, here we go. Boxel off camera has gone with, I think that's Janan. It is Ryan Janan and Jonathan Boxel getting tied up. Meanwhile, Devin Big and move. Murray are still going and Boxel had some few good hits. Janan wants to end it. Boxel's throwing. Janan, oh, that's a great play by Boxel. He's taken out the Blazers' main threat. He's going to get a five here. He didn't want it. And meanwhile, Chris Murray is heading for the box. Janand and Boxer are still going. Well, as we see, Devin and Murray head for the box. This is a good little wrestling match between Boxer and Janand. Meanwhile, Henley and Harvey are going to go. Or well, they're not, actually. Now we go. Eventually, Henley and Harvey. And Harvey doesn't want to let Henley take his helmet off. He's off and running and Henley just throwing right hands. Now Henley removes his helmet and pounds Harvey to the ice. He's still going. Janice tries to play the no-look pass. I think that was intended for Harvey. It's going to stay with the blaze at the blue line and that's... Oh. oh! He blew his whistle but that puck was still rolling through um, and we've got a little bit of afters going on. I think. Not sure Harvey who's and, doing well, what. Well, Suderman's dropped the gloves. Harvey's got... Yep, there we go. Harvey uh, says, well, yeah, if we've got him, we will. But I didn't want him. Just couple remember of, that. A couple of big ones from Suderman and then Harvey catches him off balance with one to the back. Tries to connect with a hit. And they're going to they're gonna have a go here. Seskin and Batch. Seskin lands a big one straight away. Both very active. Batch gets a good couple of right hands in. Seskin lands one too, and they both go down. Oh, a very spirited little tussle there, Dave, which I think we can see most of again. The helmet comes off early. Batch lands a good one there, followed by a good one from Seskin, and they fall down. And the old prison guard sends one of the Devils' inmates back to his cell.
Cowley with a poking backhand and a good stop by Bounds. Good, good work there. And, uh, and there's going to be a bit of pushing and shoving in the corner. Back for a bit with Cowley. What's that all about? I, I have no idea. I, I didn't wonder. see him. Uh, Sescon's going to have to. Wait a minute. Oh, dear me. Sescon comes in there to stick up for his. Yeah. Uh, and the gloves have come off. It's Craig Sescon. Sescon goes. He's gone there with Hotham. Good right hand by Sescon. Oh, they're good. Very, very good they're right hand by it. Craig Sescon. These guys are throwing bombs at each other, trading right hands. Oh, another good punch by Sescon, and down goes Hotham. Give him the decision, folks. Well, Craig right. Sescon. First chances. That was a pretty clear cut. Oh, and there's going to be Gertson, a fight. Gertson. Gertson. He's uh, getting a bit fed up of being pushed around down there, it looks like. The helmet came off, the gloves were off. Yeah, he's going And now they're going. A couple of lefts from Gertson, catch Fretter, and down goes Colton Fretter. Good fight from Steve Gertson. I don't think it was as clear cut as one might have you believe, but. Uh, oh, but you look at those two left hands there. A couple of good clearly, ones in there. Clearly put the Steelers' man off balance. And that's pretty unlike Stephen Gertson. Somebody must have really wound him up. A little bit flat in the uh, peak flow graph, Dave. Yeah. Um, Oh, what was it? Craig Sescon not happy big about attempted that. hit there. Andrew Lord, and uh, the gloves are off from Sescon. Trading toe to toe with Lord. Shirt comes up, Sescon again, with a roundhouse right hand. Real good fight, and down goes Lord. Oh, boy, oh boy. You just see them exchanging here. Lord in a bit of trouble, he's got the jersey up over his head. Linesman coming late. They go down. 